Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And today is another episode in the lockdown series. So I'm going to take, take our mind off of things. And today we'll be looking at how to keep the cars looking really shiny. And I get a lot of comments about the cars, both the cars, saying they look really shiny and clean in all the videos. And they do, and they're shiny all year round as well, not just for the videos. And I'll show you a method of keeping them really shiny. It only takes 20 to 30 minutes. Go through the whole procedure with you. And all we need is a bucket full of soapy water, two microfiber sponges, a paintbrush, a watering can and a drying cloth. And it's actually the drying cloth that makes all the difference. I've got a huge microfiber drying cloth and it's the timing between washing the car and using the drying cloth that's very important. And that's what gives it the shine. Now, for the actual videos themselves, I will use a gloss enhancer just to bring out the depth in the paint. And for that, I use Zeno 8 and Zeno 6. And I can show you how that's applied and how it takes just seconds uh, to put the stuff on and it dries off immediately. There's no buffing out or anything, but it leaves a really high gloss shine, a very effective method of getting a shiny car in a few seconds. Now, of course, the cars didn't start off shiny. When I bought them, I did some paint correction on them, um, but not paint correction as in painting things, uh, because I'm completely cack handed and I'd make a complete pig's ear of it. Now I use simple method of using 3M's Finesset uh, series of polishes to get it really shiny. And I have used the machine polisher, but uh, there's no need to if you don't want to, because you can make a bit of a mess with one of those. But that will be another series. And uh, also how we maintain the shine on the car, which I use Zeno 2 to keep that shine on the car as well. But that's done every two to three months or when I feel like it really. When I've got nothing to do, I'll go out and polish the cars. But anyway, that's enough of the blurb. Let's look at how to keep the cars looking shiny day to day. Right, here we go then. Bucket full of soapy water. I use the wash wax stuff from the garage, cheap as muck. But instead of two capfuls, I use 10. Yep, I get through a lot of it. And I've got two sponges, a gray one for doing the dirty work and a yellow one for doing the rest of it. And just use the sponge to get between the spokes and the same method I use with the M pars and all the other sorts. The only ones I had problems with were turbines and I used a paintbrush on those. And here we go. Clean up the lug holes and the alignment holes with the paintbrush and they keep nice and shiny like that. And then I use the paintbrush to get between the spokes, but not down the spokes. Uh, you just use the edge of the brush because that's where brake dust accumulates right on the edge here, right on the edge of the spokes and could quickly whiz it round and round the valve stem. And then I use the side of the brush on the, the dish and that keeps it looking nice and shiny. Simple as that really. Now, of course, if you've got an alloy that's a complete mess to start with, then you need a caustic uh, wheel cleaner. And the best stuff I've ever used is uh, Wonder Wheels. And that's very caustic and it gets rid of all the brake dust and all the rest of it. And then it gives you a good place to start with you doing a sort of weekly clean of the, the alloy. It really does work, but you can't use it often. It's very caustic and it's poisonous to cats and dogs. And so you've got to clean up everything afterwards. And you've got to be careful you don't get it on your clothes and stuff like that. But really, that's all there is to cleaning wheels. Start with a good alloy. These alloys are over 10 years old now, and they're still looking as good as they did when they were new, well, apart from the ones I crunch on the other side. And I'll show you how to do that in an episode of the lockdown series that's coming up soon. I've, so I've done all the um, filming and everything. I just need to edit it. Righty ho, so and for the purposes of this video, I'll actually dry the alloy so you can see the shine on them. I don't usually, I just leave them to uh, self dry. Um, but I also wanted to show you the, the shiny stuff, how you get the blackness of the tyre. And uh, yeah, someone put me onto this yonks ago, and the stuff is, oh, I've got a box of look here. There we go, Armour All Tyre Foam, clean, shines, and protects. Yeah, I've got a box of 12 of those and yeah, I'll get through them quite a lot. So I might put this on once a week, um, all depending on the weather. If it's rainy, it washes the stuff off pr pretty quickly. It doesn't uh, last that long. But while it is on, it looks lovely and it's so easy. Uh, you just sort of do a couple of revolutions of the wheel 
uh, avoiding the alloy as much as possible so it'll dull it a bit there you go and then leave it to dry and it takes a few minutes uh, so we've got a time lapse there we go look at the speed of that drying nicely that's all there is to it really it sort of dries after a few minutes what's that five minutes or so coming up it's done and I do all three cars uh, at the same time. So I go around this car, the 6 Series and the Mini. Here's my stuff. I've got a yellow sponge. I've got a grey sponge. I've got a paintbrush. I've got some soapy water. And that's all I need to clean the car. And say again that I use a much stronger concentration of wash wax than they recommend. And the reason I do that is because you can get the wax to smear over the car later. And I'll show you how that's done. So at the moment, I'm using the grey sponge to do all the dirty bits, like the number plate and the grills and below the um, trim line of the doors. So anything about that height, I'll use the grey sponge. And when I'm happy with all of that, oh yeah, the paintbrush, I go down all the gaps and around the V8 badge and stuff like that. All the little gaps that accumulate green stuff, especially in the UK after this damp winter we've had. Then paintbrush is very important because especially if you leave the green stuff, it goes all crunchy at some point, and then you can actually scratch the glass with it. It sort of turns into some sort of tough old solid. So yeah, keeping the green stuff off of the, all the seals very important. For all the door seals and stuff, I'll use oh, what's the stuff called? I've got that around as well somewhere. Ah, I can't remember. I'll tell you what I use when we get on to that part of the video gummy fledge that was the word I was looking for yeah I use that on all the seals it keeps them all supple so I don't get scratches on the windows so what we're going down now oh yeah we've got the yellow sponge now so we can do the whole car with that starting at the top down the windows bonnet and boot and then the sides and the front and clean the grills and all the rest of it Paintbrush out again, give a quick whiz round, clean all the green stuff off. Very important, the windows and the rear window because they do get blocked up. So that just removes all the dirt and dust from all the sort of crevices. Uh, oh, yeah, I should have edited that out, never mind. Uh, yeah, whiz round with the yellow one. And it's the timing between uh, when you rinse it and when you dry it is important. I'll explain that in a minute. So... Really, it's just case is pretty boring, isn't it? Let's face it. Oh dear, should have edited that out as well. Never mind. Um, yep, yeah, so the yellow sponge, clean the whole car, bit soapy, lovely. Yeah, not much more to say about that, really. Um, yep, yeah, the yellow sponge is the clean sponge, grey sponge is the dirty one. There we go, and I'll rinse it with a watering can. And look, it's snowing. Yeah, it's snowing. Yeah, it's not great, is it? Freezing today, absolutely freezing and snowing a bit. But I clean the cars in any old weather. And yep, yeah, watering can, starting from the top, windows. Um, next, bonnet. So, yeah, all the start at the top, work downwards. Takes a couple of uh, watering cans full. Don't use a hose because it splatters around too much and leaves the car too wet. And then I won't be able to dry it with the cloth. OK, ne next thing is the cloth. And there we go. It's a whopper. A big microfiber cloth. Stick it in the washing machine at 90 degrees every few months. Revives it. Start with the glass. Always best to start with the glass with a clean cloth. And, uh, yeah, it's very important the car's still wet. The cloth doesn't do anything at all in the dry. You've got to pick up a bit of dampness. And this folding technique I use to buff the car as well. Um, you can't use the full towel for that because the edges always end up the wettest and they'll leave streaks behind. So, yeah, you've got to the, the car's got to be wet when you dry it, which seems uh, obvious, but it's got to be wet enough. And if it's too wet, of course, the cloth just gets completely saturated and that doesn't work either. So, yeah, it's, the timing is very important. The car's still got to have some wetness on it. And that's the reason I use the watering can, because it leaves a sort of sheet of water on the car rather than sort of blobs of it everywhere, which you get from a hose pipe. And I never, ever use um, a high pressure cleaner on it. Uh, these cars just wouldn't like that. All bits would drop off and so on.
Right, and the sort of final polish I'll do with uh, Zeno 8, and I have used Zeno 6, I've got both of them. Prefer Zeno 8, um, it gives a much deeper shine, and it's so easy. You just start with three squirts, and uh, the cloth will get slightly damp, and then you just use one or two squirts as you go along. And uh, yeah, it dries almost immediately, and it's that slippery, it really is. The whole car is as slippery, slippery as that. So yeah, and that's why it looks so shiny, because it is, you know, it's absolutely slippery after you use Zeno 8 on it, or Zeno 6. And there you go, that's not too bad a job, is it? And that was probably about 30 minutes, uh, because I did do um, the Zeno 8 on it as well, and the depth of shine is fantastic isn't bad for an old car at all is it i mean it stays shiny like that all the time i i never have it uh dirty if i get the car dirty i'll get it home and uh, clean it down but this is a working car i go to work in it uh, five days a week well not anymore of course i'm going to be <laughs> doing two days a week from now on never use the six series for this the the eight series is just great now the six series isn't clean it's got pollen on it it's got dust on it it was cleaned about a week ago and Zeno 8 is perfect for this. It will clean the car, gets rid of all the pollen, gets rid of all the dust, and you end up with a, a shine just as good as the 8 series. Oh, look at that. And then we can use the special folding technique again, corner, uh, sides in, corners in, and that turns it into a polishing pad. And just go whiz around the car. There we go. I'm only doing the bonnet today. I can't be bothered to do the rest of it. And look at that. That is such a deep shine. And yeah, it matches the V8 series. There we go, not bad at all. Got a couple of stone chips and I'll show you how to get rid of those in the next episode. Yep, so that's both the cars done, looking lovely and shiny. Very little effort at all. Well, thanks very much for watching, uh, commenting and subscribing. Um, the next episode or a future episode, we'll look at the paint correction on cars using nothing more than polishes. And uh, rather than something nasty like paint and so on, I don't do that sort of stuff. I can get rid of the, the chips in the paint and so on just using polishes. Uh, not abrasive either. I use a coloured polish to get rid of the chip marks in the bonnet and on the front of the car. And that's a bit of elbow grease required for that. But it doesn't remove any paint. It just adds some polish. And it is a very effective method, but we'll look at that in another episode. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.